I'm going to talk about uses of CT imaging in acute pancreatitis severity prediction and diagnosis of splunctic vein thrombosis. I'm Borbe Ruban, a radiologist at uh, thank you at Bajcsi Hospital and a PhD student at the CTM. So my vision is to advance the understanding and treatment of acute pancreatitis and the mission is to enhance the diagnostic and prognostic value of CT imaging. These are my two ongoing projects, both centered on acute pancreatitis. The first one consists of uh, splunctic vein thrombosis prevalence. Uh, the uh, second is centered on body composition. So a couple of words about the first project. Uh, splunctic vein thrombosis is a thrombotic state of the vessels uh, of the GI system and uh, it is a local complication of acute pancreatitis affecting around 5 to 26 percent of patients. Uh, prevalence in the early phase, however, is unknown. Ultrasound, CT and MRI can all diagnose SVT with a high accuracy. However, sometimes bubble gas may interfere with ultrasound. SVT progresses without anticoagulation. It leads to complications like uh, bowel ischemia, liver failure, and leads to worse patient outcomes. So the aim of this uh, project is to understand the relationship between SVT and the early phase of AP. The question is the following. What is the prevalence of SVT in patients with acute pancreatitis in the early phase? We employ a COCOPOP framework to identify studies reporting SVT prevalence uh, in AP patients with early phase imaging. And the hypothesis is that prevalence of SVT is higher than previously estimated. We have identified 10 studies using a systematic search and five additional ones uh, with citation chasing. So here are the results of the analysis. Uh, on this figure, you can see the pool proportion of SVT in the early phase, meaning uh, first 11 days after symptom onset or first five days after hospital admission. And uh, the result is expressed as a proportion between 0 and 1. And the result of 0 0.16 means that approximately 1 in 6 patients are affected. Uh, heterogeneity was high, so we have done subgroup analysis to explain it. On, on this figure, you can see that uh, in the first group, in the zero to three days after symptom onset, prevalence is still low, around 5%, and it rises to 23% in the coming days, three to 11 days. On admission is already high at 23% and it stays elevated at 18%. Uh, these differences are clinically uh, significant and relevant, but statistical significance was not reached. On this uh, third figure, you can see a subgroup analysis uh, by disease severity. Uh, you can see that there is a a uh, rising uh, SVT proportion meant increased severity. As we see, 40%, 14% of mild patients are affected, 23% of moderate, and 31% of severe patients. The uh, difference is cl clinically meaningful, but uh, probably due to the low amount of studies reporting these results, statistical significance was not reached. On this fourth, uh, forest plot, you can see a subgroup analysis uh, by disease etiology. Uh, you can see that the alcoholic-induced AP patients are most affected, uh, nearly one in three. <coughs> While in biliary etiology, only 12% of patients are affected. Uh, the differences in this case are both statistically and clinically significant. The fifth forest plot shows a subgroup analysis by the amount of pancreatic necrosis. And uh, we have two, three groups, uh, necrosis absent. In this uh, case, 11% of patients are affected, 
Necrosis under 30%, a quarter of patients are affected, and necrosis over 30%, uh, and in this case, half of patients are affected. The results are both clinically and statistically significant. Uh, it highlights that some patients are at higher risk at uh, developing SVT. Uh, the strength of our uh, study are the following. We have done uh, transparent, we have a transparent methodology. We have uh, the protocol published in the Prospero database. We have done a comprehensive analysis on the topic and we have accounted for between study heterogeneity with subgroup analyses. The limitations include that almost half of uh, included studies were, ret were retrospective by design and uh, majority of them had low uh, patient numbers leading to imprecision. So in conclusion, SVT is prevalent in the early phase, affecting around one in six patients. Uh, occurrence is low in the first three days after symptom onset and rises subsequently. Uh, increasing severity, alcoholic etiology, and more necrosis uh, are associated with increased incidence of SVT. Implications for practice are that uh, there should be rigorous screening uh, for SVT, especially in high-risk patients, and anticoagulation practices should target them as well. Uh, questions for researchers are the following. Can SVT be prevented? Uh, and do high-risk patients benefit from routine anticoagulation? Uh, this slide summarizes the progress to date of the first project. We have uh, completed most of the figures and assessed the level of evidence and uh, currently working in the, on the manuscript. So I'm going to continue with the second project uh, where we investigate the effect of uh, CT calculated body composition on the outcomes of patients with AP. So in 12 years, the uh, majority of global population is projected to be overweight. And uh, we are aware that uh, BMI correlates with uh, the outcomes of many diseases, uh, including AP. But recent data suggests that uh, body fat and uh, a low muscle mass is more strongly correlated with mortality and the worse outcome than BMI is. And CT and MRI would be a great tool to assess body composition. So our, our aim is to uh, understand the relationship between CT calculated body composition and AP severity. The question is uh, if there is an as a significant association between the composition uh, by uh, uh, calculated CT calculated measures and the severity of AP. We will follow a PFO framework uh, and analyze retrospectively the goulash study participants with CT imaging. And the uh, hypothesis is that uh, higher deposit is associated with a worse outcome. The clinical and research implication of the project would be that uh, severity predicting algorithms would be more accurate. Uh, there are around 500 patients uh, with uh, CT scan on admission and on discharge in the trial, and uh, they have received uniform imaging. Uh, we are currently gathering the files of the patients, and we would like to calculate age and gender adjusted at the positive matrix and link them with outcomes. So to summarize uh, my progress, uh, these are my two ongoing projects, and we would like to finish them by the end of this year's summer. I would like to finish the presentation with a quote from Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you. My question regarding to your first project, and are there uh, an existing meta-analysis in this topic? So about the early phase of uh, AP, in, uh, there is no data in meta-analysis yet. And there is a meta-analysis from 2015, uh, uh, which examines the whole course of the disease. 
I would like to know which, what variables you're going to include in the multivariable analysis. Um, what are the confounders, the possible ones? Uh, so there are uh, many confounders. Uh, obviously, uh, we would like to uh, include uh, almost the same ones as in the first project as uh, etiology and severity at start is a uh, really important uh, factor, but uh, uh, obviously necrosis, these all, all should be considered in the second project also. Low molecular uh, weight heparin is indicated in every stage of acute pancreatitis. This is one of the questions, and uh, you said that the screening for the thrombosis is, is uh, uh, offered. Uh, and I would like to ask that what kind of diagnostic modalities uh, and when we have to start the screening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So regarding your first question, uh, as I know, clinicians are very uh, careful with uh, low molecular weight heparin in AP patients as there is a risk of bleeding also present. And uh, they have to balance, obviously, the risks and benefits of uh, giving uh, anticoagulation to patients. But uh, there have been studies that uh, report that uh, um, bleeding complications were not more frequent uh, if they were given heparin. So uh, to answer it, probably they should receive heparin. And uh, to the second uh, question, uh, so could you repeat that again? Uh, the screening. Screening, yes, screening. So uh, both, uh, I mean, CT, MRI, and ultrasound all can diagnose SVT, but uh, sometimes uh, we are in a, um, like a false state of not knowing about SVT because only ultrasound is done. And uh, the complication is not uh, prescribed there, and uh, no more further imaging is done. And uh, um, the goal is to uh, ask uh, about the complication about, uh, from the radiologist to include it in the report or just do some further imaging if it's not uh, mentioned. You mentioned uh, you are waiting for a few more plots. Which kind of plots uh, are they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so all these uh, results were univariate. Uh, uh, analysis is, and we would like to do a uh, multivariate uh, analysis of uh, SVT occurrence in patients. And uh, uh, we are in the process of uh, exploring if that's feasible or not. Mm -hmm.